What's up guys? It's late July. It's about 100 degrees outside today and we're headed to the river in the hottest part of the day. It seems like we've been catching more fish right in the middle of the day. The first hour or so that we're there and then on into the afternoon as it starts to cool off. It seems like the action slows down. We've got plenty of bait, plenty of time. I hope you guys join us. Let's go have some fun today. Like we got some good current which uh, I like about one mile an hour current when we're doing this drifting we don't drift at one mile an hour but that slowing the boat down really helps on getting those catfish's attention and I'll explain that here in a minute I'm gonna drop the trolling motor real quick We're going to be using a couple different kinds of rigs today. Well, actually three different types. And I'll, I'll show you guys what we're going to be doing. We're going to be dropping some big baits. We've been catching a lot of five to 10 pound fish, which is fine. I like to catch those too, but we're really hoping to hook into a monster today. We marked a ton of fish in about 50 foot of water right here close to the bank. And we're just going to suspend these baits uh, about five foot off the bottom. We got about probably a half mile and uh, we'll probably make two or three passes down this bank as long as we're catching fish. But <clears throat> we're going to be using 10 ounces of weight uh, just to make sure they stay straight down. But yeah, like I said, we're going to be using three different kinds of rigs. Two of them are double hooker eggs, but they're completely different. They're both double hooker eggs, but they're completely different rigs. All right, so for bait today, we've got some Asian carp, some skipjack, and some shad. So we've got all the good stuff. And I haven't been doing very good on shad here lately, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. I'm just gonna throw a little head out there and I'll save that for later. Just because I didn't bite on shad last week doesn't mean they're not going to bite on it today. Oh. I'll show you guys this uh, double hook rig I was talking about here. This is a deadly rig for suspend fishing because you can fish two different depths with one rod. So we got one right up off the bottom. And then we'll have another one about four feet off the bottom. So you'll see what this does in the water. You see how the current is going to pull those baits out just like that away from the main line. And it's just going to, it's just, you're covering two different depths. And when you drop it down, it's not going to get tangled because the weight's already on the bottom. If you want to learn how to tie the double hook rig, uh, I've got a video that briefly explains it, but Chris Souders here on YouTube has a great video explaining how to tie the double hook rig. The knots that he teaches, I highly recommend because it's a really strong knot. That's the, it's hard to get an inline knot to be really strong, but he's got it figured out. So. Yeah, we got more current today than we did last time I was out. I don't know where they're getting all this water from. And this rig right here, this is just a basically like a Carolina rig. The only difference is I've got my weight attached to the swivel. It's a three-way swivel and I just got a clip on it with the weight attached to it. But it basically does the same thing as a Carolina rig. The only reason I've got it set up like that is because I don't have any slip sinkers, but it does the same thing. 
And here's another double hook rig, guys, but it's completely different than the double hook rig I just showed you because we're going to put one big bait on this type of double hook rig. And then we're going to come down here with this next one. And we're going to get it, try to get it where it's really going to be exposed. And then bring it out like that. Then I'm going to cut this off. No, that's another piece of bait, but fish comes up and grabs just the back part of it. He'll get that hook. If he grabs the whole thing, he'll get this hook, or he might get both hooks. And you can also catch a small fish on that because a lot of times those small fish will just grab the back of the bait. And if, you, if he does that on this, you're going to get him hooked. It's just important to make sure that you get that bottom hook in there right so it's really exposed. I got these plastic rod holders on the front of my boat. They were on here when I bought it. I don't recommend these for catfish. And I mean, I know a lot of people use them, but if I do use them, I loosen my drag way up because those things will snap snap off, especially when they get old and dry rotted. They're just flimsy compared to, you know, what we normally use. I just don't like all that play and stuff. Got to get me some monster rod holders to go up here. I think I'm going to go with the new uh, 535, I think is what it is. The new one that he came out with. They're a little more compact. I think they'll work out good on the gunnels of a boat. We're gonna cool off here, get us something to drink. We'll be right back with the fish. Means a lot to me. Anybody can love a tree, I guess. This will be the one I love. I seen that one hit. It was That's a little one. You want it? What? First fish of the day. We've been drifting for 24 minutes and 30 seconds. Here, I'll take the rod. So I'll pause the screen so I can show you guys this. You can see the fish right here. Uh, come up off the bottom for a minute and then go back down. You can see him right there. And then he sets there for a minute. And all of a sudden, he comes up and hits our bait right there. You can see him come up and grab the bait, go back down, and then... When we picked the rod up there, he went. It looks like he might have had another fish with him. But I thought that was pretty cool. I thought some of you guys might want to see that. All this purple and yellow and red right here is our bait and sinker. And then you can see where the fish come up and nailed it. And then that's us pulling him up right there. There he goes. So here's what we got for supper tonight, guys. We got some hickory smoked beanie weenies, <laughs> some peanut butter crackers, and an L81. If you don't know what an L81 is, it's a soft drink that you can only buy in Kentucky. I think you can only buy it in Kentucky. I know that's the way it used to be. Now, normally when you start eating, you catch some fish, so. About a 50 pound. Oh, this can't be doing. Oh, there he is. Is that a, is that a fish? Yeah, we got that one. Mm. Oh. Well, we watched this one hit on the depth finder, too. This is that double hooker rig with that big half skip jack. Well, that's probably, yeah, about a half skip jack. I guess it's probably about the same size. He's just a little meaner. I just had to drop this down. You got a little flathead. That's awesome. Yeah. Look at all that mud on it. Yeah. Nice little fish. Anytime I catch a flathead, whether it's two pounds or 40 pounds, I love catching them, man. They're awesome fish. That's probably my favorite freshwater fish right there. I love catching the blues, too. I think there's more big blues than there is flatheads around here where we're at, but these are some awesome fish. They are some cool looking fish. Yeah. There he goes. He's good shape. So our current speed is about 0.8 miles an hour, and we've got our boat slowed down to 0 0.3, 0 0.4. 0 0.8 mile an hour is not really too fast. Uh, I do think it's better to go slow than fast, but the reason we're slowing our boat down is to get the scent back behind the boat. Uh, if you were just drifting at the speed of the current, you know, you're probably still catching fish, but that fish is probably not gonna smell your bait until it's right in front of him. But with us slowing the boat down like we are, that current 
is going a lot faster than the boat, which is taking all that blood and oil out of that bait, all the scent. It's going to be taking all that scent way back behind the boat. So if there's any fish downstream, they're going to smell it and know it's coming way before it gets to us. So he's going to be down there ready. I think it makes a huge difference. Give it a try sometimes if you're in current. Even if it's even if it's low current, just put your trolling motor on one and just barely slow the boat down, you know. Use that current to your advantage just like when you're anchor fishing. That's crazy. Girl jumped into the floor. I don't even know where she is anymore. She might fell out. Oh. Oh, behind. That's not her. Oh my god. No, that's a fish. Hold on. Hold on. He's on there. Get him, get him, get him. <laughs> Just put the flathead back, hooked up again, guys. Landon gets this one, it'll probably be a 60 pounder. <laughs> He hit kind of funny. He kind of hit like a flathead. He just slowly pulled that rod down. That was on a piece of shad, Landon. That's the first fish we've caught on shad in a long time. Dang, the way you got that rod bent, it must be something to him. Is he rolling like a blue or pulling like a flathead? He ain't rolling, he's just swimming with it. Putting off one bite. They're good fight, huh? You said you wanted to feel a good fight today. You got it. <laughs> I'm going two pounders. Trying to pull through them in slow. Take your time. I think I've been getting more out. Yeah, you got to take your time in this deep water. You go put a hurting on them fish, pull them up too fast. There's a barge. Oh. Oh, that's a lot bigger oh, fish than I thought it holy. was. <laughs> that's probably a 25, 30 pound fish. <laughs> what is the We're going to have to get him in before we get hit by a barge. Let me oh, get these yeah. fish grips. Come on. All right, I got him. The bait's still in his mouth. Shad head. Nice fish. Your He's peeing on us. That is a nice fish, Lanny. You want to weigh him? Uh, yeah. He's, uh, he don't have any belly on him whatsoever. As you can tell, he's just long, skinny fish. From a, I'm sure It looks like a male. Just going off how big his head is. Yeah, his spawn marks are healed up. He'd probably be 30 pound if he had a belly on him, but he's real skinny. <laughs> We got honked out by the barge. We was getting too close. I mean, he's still a good distance out. He's just letting us know that he's there. Guys, there's Landon's beast. She always gets the big one. 27 and a half pounds. I got a weight on it for him. I think he's ready to put it back in. <laughs> you want to put it back in or you need me to do he's it? He's starting to break the back. You want me to do it? Yeah. So we drifted the exact same spot we did on the first drift where we caught the three fish. Never had a bite. We're gonna go hit one more spot before we load up and leave. We're gonna anchor up at a creek mouth. Just give it 15, 20 minutes, see if there's any, any fish moving through there. All right, guys, we anchored up in one more spot after we made that last drift, never got a bite. It seems like these fish are biting more in the middle of the day, right in the heat of the day. It doesn't make any sense, but it is what it is. I think what we're gonna do, guys, is go ahead and head home, get some sleep tonight, and we're gonna get out here tomorrow earlier and see if we can catch some more of that afternoon bite, or that midday bite, I guess you would say. But, but we're gonna run home, get some food and some sleep. We'll see you guys tomorrow, stay tuned.
Okay guys, we're getting ready to bait up. We found us a spot here where the wind's not blowing too bad. And there's four pieces of skipjack. This is that magic hour here lately, about three o'clock in the afternoon seems to be when that's when we've been catching the fish. I remember what I said yesterday about slowing the boat down in this current. Like today, we've only got about 0.5 mile an hour current, but we're still gonna slow the boat down just to use that current to our advantage, get that scent to go downstream. Oh, fish. Oh. Large bite. Large bite. It's been a while since we got one of them. Big or small? It ain't nothing. I'm gonna try to bring him up slow. Uh, there's a the bottle back there. Okay guys, uh, we drifted for about 45 minutes here, caught that one little blue. So we're gonna reel up and go find us another spot. There's a lot of fish here, but they all look to be the same size. About like the size of the one we caught. Bait here, courtesy of the bow fisherman. Good deal, we got good fresh bait now. They shot that one right through the top of the head. He's still alive, heck yeah. That thing's still flopping. Man, that is awesome. I was dying to get some carp. Those guys were nice enough to tell us where they had shot one at. Said we could have it if we found it. Sure enough, we found one still alive. It doesn't get any fresher than that. Asian carp dead everywhere. Somebody's been bogey. There's two over there. I see one, two over there. All right, we're fishing, guys. I don't think so. I think we had a bite. Oh, there you go. That might be a little better one right there. There. He's fired up. Yeah, this probably we probably found the spot here. We've been drifting for three minutes and 56 seconds when we hooked the first fish. That was a piece of Asian carp on that one. There's the bubbles. That's what we want to see. Might be a decent fish. Yeah, it's not a bad one. He liked that Asian carp, didn't he? There you go. It's a good fish, Landon. That fish was full of air. When you pull them up out of 50 foot, it seems like it doesn't matter what you do. They they get full of air and can't swim, but either leave them in the water for a minute on the hook or barb them with a piece of PVC pipe and they'll be fine. He'll go. There he goes. Straight back down. All right, guys. We're on some fish right here. Look at all them fish down there. Oh, yeah. They don't look big, but that's all right. We'll take them. I'll take any size fish, any day. It's big? Uh, took a little drag. You don't <laughs> feel like a big fish, do you? Well, he's big if you took a drag, isn't he? Gotta be, I don't think I got that take down on video. Boy, he buried it. I am addicted to this suspend fishing. Seeing that rod go in the water. That's like your bite alarm when you're suspend fishing. You got that rod in the zero degree angle. You hear that rod go in the water. Oh, it's a nice fish, but boy, I brought him up too quick. You no, know, he doesn't look to be that good. 
good, man. You want me to get the fish grips? Oh, pardon me. You got him? Yeah. See how big he is. I ain't seen how big he is yet. Oh, yeah. I never seen him. Open up, buddy. I'll take care of you. Strong fish. Nice fish, guys. It's probably 18 to 20 pound fish. He's bleeding a little bit, but it's just from his lip. He wasn't hooked deep. I'm gonna get this dude back in. We're on some fish. There's another real nice fish on the screen right now. Hopefully he don't rip my finger off when I put him back. I'm sure he will. See if we can get a helicopter bite out here instead of a park bite. Fish number four for the day. Felt like another decent fish. When I picked up on it anyway. We just went over top of a tree. These these two rods over here is hung in that tree. And then this fish here was also in that tree and he nailed it. Yeah, we got a mess over here. We got two rods hung up. Three. We got three rods hung up in this brush pile, but we got a fish out of it, so it's worth it. Really? He's just... That's a blue. We got the boat anchored with this rod right here. No, he was not hooked good at all, actually. There. He wasn't gonna come off. All right, we're gonna put this little guy back. Well, he ain't too little. He's probably an eight pounder. Decent little fish there. But we got a mess to get straightened out. I'm gonna have to break two or three of these off probably. I doubt they'll come out as they already would have. He gone. All right, we're gonna clean this mess up, guys, so we can get on another fish. I'm always trying to figure out a way to store this net because it's always in the way, you know, this boat doesn't have a whole lot of room in it because of the big center console. But I was looking at how this dimney top was made, the sides over here. You put the net behind this piece, in front of this piece, and then you can slide it back in behind that piece. It holds the net perfect. Check that out. I mean, it'll never come out going down the river. It's got just enough pressure on it to where it's not gonna come out. But you can, if you, if you go to hook a fish, you can pull it out and there it is great way to store the net if any of you guys uh have a bimini top similar to this you might want to give that a shot hey what's the ball I'll, t I'll take them all day long. Them's nice fish. Ow. That's number five. I just like seeing that rod go in the water. What is that? <laughs> That's on the spawn mark, I reckon. Okay. I thought it was a scale on that first. Okay guys, the bite slowed down. I think it's, we're gonna go ahead and call it a day before it gets dark on us. We got a pretty good ride back to the boat ramp. It's been a great couple of afternoons out here fishing, guys. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Hopefully some of you guys learned something. God bless you guys. We'll see you in the next video.